Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be combining the fire simulation and geometry nodes to create this cool animation. We'll be covering the fire simulation, how to import it into geometry nodes, and how to create this cool fire material. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do, of course, is delete the default cube. I'm going to press X and delete it. Next, I'm going to press Shift A and add in a UV sphere. We're first going to create the fire simulation and then we will open up a new file for the geometry nodes. I'm going to scale the UV sphere down to a value of about 0.5 or so. Then I'm going to go over to object down to quick effects and then add in the quick smoke. If we go into front view and then go over to the physics tab, we can change some of these settings over here. First off, I'm going to scale the domain up and drag it up just slightly, just like this. For the resolution divisions, I'm going to go with a value of 128. You don't really need to go too high with this because you're not going to even see the fire simulation, so probably around there is pretty good. Next up is the time scale. This is important because the fire simulation with the geometry nodes looks extremely fast. So we're going to slow down the simulation quite a bit by setting this down to 0.3. Next up, with the adaptive domain, I'm actually going to leave this off. Unfortunately, that will add a lot to the baking time, but it's necessary because it messes up the volume when, it, when you import the fire into a new scene, as you can see on screen. In the gas settings, we're going to open up the fire and set the reaction speed down to 0.7. This will add a little bit of height to the fire. The lower you go with this value, the higher the flames will be. And then finally, you can set the end frame right here. You can leave it at 250 or set it down to 200 like I'm going to do. It does not matter. And then for the type, I'm going to switch it over to modular. One very important step is to actually set a new folder for the cache settings right here. As you can see, this is a temporary folder. That means once you close this Blender file, this cache will actually get deleted. So it's very important that you set a new folder wherever you have saved your Blender file. So I'm going to click on this button here and then navigate to a folder. Next up, we're going to select the inflow object, which in this case is the UV sphere. And for the flow type, I'm going to switch it over to fire. I'm going to open up the flow source and set the surface emission down to a value of one. So the fire is a little bit closer to the surface of the UV sphere. And for the volume emission, I'm going to set that up to 0.5. This will have a little bit of volume inside the UV sphere actually emitting fire. Finally, we're going to open up the texture panel and open up this and we're going to create a new texture. This will give the fire a little bit more randomness. So I'm going to go over to the texture tab, click on new, set the type over to clouds. And then for the colors, we'll drag the contrast of the texture up just slightly. So we have more black and white. And then finally, the size of this, I'm going to go lower. Let's go with a value of 0.1. Now we can go back over to the physics tab and select the texture that we just created right here in the drop down menu. The last step is to change the offset. If we were to animate this, the texture will actually move around the surface of the UV sphere, which will look very cool. So an easy way to do this is if we select this value, we'll add in a new driver by going hashtag frame, and then we need to divide it by something. This will make sure the texture goes a lot slower. Let's divide it by 500 and enter. So as you can see over the course of the entire animation over to 200 frames, it's going to move up to a value of 0.4. Over in the cast settings, you can also turn on is resumable just in case you want to stop the bake. And once you've done that, go ahead and click on bake data. Before we continue with this tutorial, here is a quick word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning platform where thousands of people can come together and learn something new. I've used many online learning platforms and I can say that Skillshare is definitely one of the best ones. It has a huge variety of classes to choose from and you will never run out of things to learn. Photography, illustration, graphic design, blender are just a few of the topics that Skillshare has to offer. With a premium membership, you get access to every single class on their platform. That means that there's going to be no ads and you can learn without any interruption. One class I can recommend is Blender 3D Essentials for Animators by John Newells. If you are new to animating in Blender, this is a great starter course. It covers the basics of animating and by the end you will have created a pretty neat animation. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get one month of Skillshare's premium membership for free. So you can start learning whatever you want to today. So go ahead, click the link in the description and claim your free month right now. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back into the tutorial. 
All right, the simulation has finished baking. Let's go ahead and press Control N and start a new Blender file. Make sure you save it first though. And then what we're gonna do is delete the default cube. We're not going to need it. Then I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a new object and it's going to be a volume and then import open VDB. Select this and then navigate to where that cache is that you saved. Mine is right here. You can see two different files, config and data. If you open up the data folder, you can see all of the fluid frames right here. You can press A to select everything and go import open VDB. Once we do this, we can hit the spacebar to player animation and it might be hard to see, but you can see some volume is right there. If we go over to the volume tab, you can see all of the different attributes that the fire simulation has. The density for the smoke, the flame, the fuel, all that we can see right here. So next up, I'm going to come up to the top right corner and split this view and then come over here and switch it to the geometry node editor. I'm going to press N with the volume selected. Make sure you have this object selected or it's not going to work. And the first thing that we need to do is press shift A and add in a volume and then a volume to mesh node right here and place it in between this. At the moment, you can see it's using the density, which is currently the smoke. And this is what it looks like which is actually kind of cool, but that's not what we want. We want to take the flame data. So instead of the density, we're gonna type in flame and enter. Lowercase, just like that. And you should be able to see the flame appear in your scene. We can then add in a mesh and go over to the subdivision surface and smooth it out. I'm gonna set the level up to a value of two. And we can see here we have a lot more geometry to work with. And I'm also gonna go into top view and then place it in the middle of our scene right about there and drag it lower just like that. The next thing that I'll do is I'll add in a cube to every single vertex on our flame. We can do this very easily by hitting shift A and go underneath the point node and select the point instance right here. We'll place it in between the subsurface and the group output. Here we can select a object that we want to instance on every single point. Now I'm going to add in a new cube and drag this over to the left side. Then I'll go back to our geometry nodes by clicking the fluid data up on the top right. And then we will select the cube that we just created. Once we do this, we can see that all of the cubes are located here. I'm gonna set the level down to one just so it runs a little bit more smooth. Uh, you can see though that the scale of the cubes is way too high. So to fix that, we can add in another node. If we go over to points, we can add in a point scale node and place it before the point instance. We can either decide to scale it along the X, Y, or Z, or we can switch this over to a float value and change the factor down here. I'm gonna go with a value of 0 0.02. Let's just see what that looks like. And there we can see the cubes are a lot smaller. Now this is looking pretty good so far, but I want to do a couple more things with the cubes. First off, I want the size to become smaller as it rises up. We can do this with a couple of other nodes. First, we need to add in a attribute and then a separate XYZ and place it here. We need to separate all of the axes so we can grab them individually. For the vector, I'm just gonna type in position and then over in the Z result, I'm gonna type in Z and enter. So we're creating a new attribute for the Z location. Then we can take that Z location and change it over to the scale. So I'll drag this over to the right side. I'm gonna press Shift A and add in another node. I'm gonna go with an attribute and a mix node and we'll place it right here. I'm gonna switch the mode over to multiply. And then we're gonna do a couple of attributes down here. First off though, we need to switch the type from float over to attribute. And we'll change that in just a second. So how this is gonna work is we're going to take the Z, so we can select the Z attribute. We're gonna multiply that times the scale. And the result of the Z and the scale is going to be scale down here. Then if we were to come over to the factor and type in scale, type in scale for the result, we can see that this is currently working, but the cubes are way too big. So now if we turn up the factor, that will bring down the size of the cubes. And as you can see, this is actually working, but it's currently inverted. This actually might look cool if you render this out into an animation and you can see that on screen now, but that's not what we're going for. We want the cubes to start out big and then become smaller as they rise up. So instead of using the attribute mix node, I'm gonna Alt D that to get rid of it. 
we're going to be adding in a new node. I'm going to go underneath attribute and then select the map range node. This allows us to take two different values and output two other different values. So for the first attribute, we're going to type in Z and select the Z attribute. And then for the result, we're going to type in scale once again. Now currently this is not really working and that's because the values down here are currently messed up. I'm gonna set the max to zero and the minimum up to around three. We're gonna to have to play around with this though. And as you can see, this is working but everything is way too big. We can change the size of the cubes by changing the max value here. If we bring this down to around 0.1 or so, we can see this is the effect that we're getting. So now from this point, you can change the min and the max values to get the desired effect that you want. I'm gonna come over to the subdivision surface and bring the level up to two once again so we can actually see what we're doing. You can also change the two min value right here and this will clamp down on the sides up at the top as well. So if we were to set this value to negative 0.02 and enter, we can see that the top of the cubes are now a lot smaller and that is about what I want. And there we go, that is the result with the geometry nodes. And as you can see, this is quite simple. Over in the volume to mesh, you can actually select any of these attributes over on the right side. So if you wanna take the density, the flame, the fuel, the emission, all of those you can put into the density right here and it will change how it looks. For example, if you type in the word temperature, you can also get some interesting results. As you can see, this looks a little bit different now and it's taking the temperature attribute instead of the flame and creating this sort of a result. For now, I'm gonna be sticking with the flame attribute. Here is a quick preview of the entire setup for the geometry nodes if you wanna take a look and make sure you have everything correct. The next step in this tutorial is to create that cool fire material that you saw at the beginning of the video. To do this, we need to select the cube that we're actually instancing on our fire simulation. This menu, I'm gonna switch it over to the shader editor and then create a new material. We're not going to need the principled shader, so you can go ahead and delete that. The first node that I will add is a shader and then emission shader, and I'll place it here. If we take the emission, plug it into the surface, the whole viewport is lagging just a little bit, so with the subdivision surface modifier, I'm gonna bring that down to one so it runs a little bit smoother. Let's go back over to the material and continue working. The next node that I'll add is a color ramp. We're gonna press Shift A and add in a color ramp. We'll take the color, plug that into the emission, and then we're gonna play around with this. But before we do that, we need to actually set the coordinates for this color ramp. I'm gonna do that with a texture and then a gradient texture. We'll place it here. We'll take the color value, plug it into the factor. And if we were to drag this up, you can see it's not really working. What's happening is it's taking every single one of these cubes and adding a gradient as you can see here. That's not what we want. We want the entire thing to share the same gradient. So to fix that, we're gonna press Shift A and go underneath the input tab and add in a geometry node right here. With this node, we can take the position of every single cube and plug that into the gradient texture. Now what's happening is it's going to share the entire gradient on every single one of those cubes. If I drag it this way, you can see it's working correctly. Currently though, it's rotated in the wrong direction. We can fix that by adding in a vector and a mapping node, we'll place it right here. And we're gonna rotate this along the Y. Yes, it is. I'm going to select this and type in 90. Now that we have our gradient texture working, let's go ahead and change the color. With the color ramp right here, I'm going to add in a new handle and drag this over to the left. I'm gonna switch this over to a nice red color somewhere around here or so, maybe a little bit more orange. And actually I'm gonna drag it over to the middle and then I'm gonna create another handle. This is gonna be more of a yellow color. So come over here. So we switch it over to a nice yellow color, something like that. And then I'm gonna drag it a little closer to the white and set the mode over to ease. With the gradient texture, I'm also gonna switch it over to ease just so it's a little bit more of a smooth transition. And now I'm going to change the location of the texture. So with the mapping node, we can take the location of the X. Yep, we're gonna drag this a little bit higher, just like that. And then we're also gonna change the scale because currently I think the transitions are a little bit too sharp. So with the Z scale, I'm gonna go with a value of 0.6. Then we'll take the X location, drag it a little bit lower. Probably around there is good. Our material is looking pretty good so far, but there's one more thing that we can do to give it a lot cooler results. What we're gonna do is add in a texture and a noise texture. 
we're going to take the noise texture coordinates and mix those with the gradient texture coordinates. And this will give a really cool effect. We're going to need a mix RGB node, so add in a mix RGB and place it here. We'll take the factor of the noise, plug that into the bottom input. The position of the geometry node is going to go into the vector, and we're going to switch this over to 4D. Now what happens is if we go over to the emission and bring the strength up to let's say 10 or so so we can see it a little bit better, the gradient texture is looking a lot more random and a lot more realistic. Let's go back over to the geometry node and add in that level of subdivision back up. So let's go with a level of 2. And we'll go back over to the shader editor and select the cube. Over in the noise texture, we're also going to be animating this W slider, and this will give even more variation. If we click on this, we can go with hashtag frame to add in a driver, divided by, let's say, 400 or so. Now, if we restart and play our animation, we can see that the texture of the flame is actually moving around, and it looks pretty cool. That might be a bit slow, so we can go with a little bit less than that. Let's go with a value of 250. Now, if we play our animation, you can see the texture is moving and it looks really nice. If you want more randomness, you can bring up the mix node right here. If I go all the way up to one, it will completely get rid of the gradient. But if we were to drag it up just slightly, it'll mix the gradient and the noise texture together. The next part is to add in some lighting, change the background, compositing, all of that you can see on screen. What I did here is I just added a little bit of a glow. I made the background transparent and then rendered it out into an animation. But there you go, that is how you create a cool fiery animation using the fire simulation and geometry nodes. Thank you very much for watching and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you have suggestions for other tutorials in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new, consider subscribing because I upload Blender tutorials all the time. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.